Hey, what's up you guys and welcome back to Premiere Gal. So on my channel, you guys know that I make tons of video editing tutorials, video production tutorials, product reviews, sometimes some random challenges. It's a lot of fun here. And I've partnered with Boris FX, which is a visual effects company to do a series called Final Touches. So essentially what I'm doing in the series is showing how to use some of their premium filters inside of Premiere Pro so you can add sort of that wow factor to your video and add visual effects just in your editing system and you don't have to go into After Effects. So in this video, I'm covering the premium filter called Stage Light, which is part of Continuum and allows you to add realistic stage lights into your scene. So it's great for concert scenes, for performances, any type of scene, right? And it's super powerful. So there's three different ways you can get stage lights and use it as a plug in Premiere Pro. You can buy it on its own as a premium filter, or you can buy it as part of the lights unit, or you can buy it as part of the entire Continuum plugin. So I'll leave the options down in the description box below. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Premiere Pro. All right, you guys, so I'm here inside of Premiere Pro and let me show you the final effect that I was able to create with stage lights. Let me just play it for you. So you can see that what I was able to do if I click on this clip here, you can see that I've applied the stage light effect and if I turn this off, these lights here were not a part of the scene. They're completely artificially created in a realistic way using stage light. And I added some subtle smoke and if you watch closely, the lights animate to the beat of the music, which I will show you how to create in this tutorial. So let's go to the demo clip here, which is just the original stock video clip that I got from Pond5. So you can see there's nothing going on here and I've muted the music track, which I got from Soundstripe. So the first step is of course to go to effects and I've already searched for BCC lights, which pulls up the Boris FX Continuum Light Unit, which has a bunch of different effects already in it. In our case, we're going to choose the stage light. So with the clip selected, you can just double click to apply it. So what this did was just create a default single light on the right. And of course, we're going to customize it and make it look great. So first, I wanna call attention to the effect controls. This is where you manipulate the stage lights and add customizations. And there's an effects browser. So if you wanna work from presets, you can do that. If you click on this, you can see that there's a bunch of presets here that you can work from. So this one's pretty awesome. It's called the built-in triple point white low smoke. So if you like the way that this looks, you can just apply it and you're done. There's also heaps of other ones. There's the built-in triple point triangle. There's the built-in triple point blue smoke. There's a lot of different light effects already here for you to choose from if you want. But for me, I'm just gonna use the default and instead of hitting apply, I'm just going to cancel. What I'm going to do is break down how to manipulate lights, how to add smoke, and how to use the beat reactor. I'm not gonna cover everything in this tutorial, but I'm gonna do the best to explain it if you're just beginning to use stage light. All right, so let's start with light. Let's toggle down here. And you can see you can add three different lights. We have one light source already on, so let's go ahead and manipulate that a bit. So let's go ahead and toggle down, and here you can choose a different render mode. Right now it's on natural, but you can also choose strong, if you want it to be a stronger light or weak. You can play around with what type of light you want, but I'm going to choose natural. And then here's color, and I'm going to use color in the scene. I really like the mixture of blue and red, so the first light will be blue. So let's choose blue here and hit OK. Now we can choose intensity level. So if you toggle down, it's easier to use the slider. So to the right, it's more intense, and to the left, it's less intense. So I'm just going to increase that just a tad. I don't want it to be too bright because we're gonna manipulate it more. So that looks good to me. And now with position X, Y, I can move this along the X axis here to be closer to the ballerina or farther away from the ballerina along the X axis. The same with the Y axis, which is vertical up and down. So I'm gonna leave mine here. We may want to play around with this later on. And then it's onto the Z axis, which controls the light in 3D space. So kind of play around with this, depending on what you're going for. And I think that this looks good right here. So it's really awesome that you can control the light in 3D space. All right, so then there's the type of light. Do you want it to be a spotlight, which 
In our case, we want it to be a spotlight because we want to illuminate the ballerina on stage with the blue light. You can also choose a point light, which is a different style. So let's choose spot. And then there's further parameters. So here we can change the direction of the light. That's what interest is, is moving the light to the interest point, in our case, the ballerina. So how can we move this light to change direction? See how I'm moving it along the x-axis here? And then here, I'm moving it up and down. So I wanna move mine more down, but I also wanna move it back towards the ballerina. So you can see that this is also here, so I can move this in the program panel if it's easier. So I can move it up, down, vertically, or to the X and Y axis left and right. So it depends on which method is easier for you. Sometimes people prefer using the point to move it and other people prefer the coordinates. Same with interest Z here. You can, of course, use the slider here to control the light direction in 3D space. So if you need it pointed directly at the audience, you can do that, but I'm having it more pointed down towards the ballerina, like so. All right, and then there's the cone angle. So this controls how wide you want the light. So if you increase it to the right, it's wider. If you increase it down, it gets thinner. So I'm gonna make mine more of a wide light like this. And then you can also add feathering if you like. The more feathering you add though, the more refined it gets. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of feathering here. And then of course there's the light model. I prefer natural light because if you see distant fall off, it just looks a little bit too intense. There's also constant, which looks more like it's a one fluid light. And I think the spotlight natural light looks a lot better. And then I will skip offset source, but let's go to target here. And this will control the length of the light. So you can see that as I increase this, it gets longer and it's more like it's fading towards the ballerina. But if I decrease this, the light is quite short, which we don't want. So let's increase it down to the ballerina. So now that we have light source one done, I can just quickly make my second light using the same controls that I just showed you. So I'm just gonna turn that on and make my second light, but this time I'm going to make it a red color. And since I'm using the same parameters that I just showed you, I'm just going to fast forward as I bring this light up and change the shape. So then the next step is smoke here. So smoke is pretty cool. You can turn it on, it creates more atmosphere. You can also change the random pattern. So the seed here, if you just click along here, you can see that it creates new patterns randomly. That's why it's called seed. It's like a random scene. So you can just click till you find a pattern that you like. I think this looks great, so I'll just keep it here. Then the density is how intense you want it. So right now, if I play it back, it actually looks a bit intense and it doesn't look natural. So what I'm going to do is actually decrease this down to like 10. And you can see that the smoke is still there. It's just more subtle. And then below that, you can change the speed of the movement of the smoke. And right now it's quite fast, so I'll decrease it to 20. So now we have our smoke and our lights, and you can see it's just really subtle and natural. If I turn this off, that's what it was before, and this is after. Now the last step here is enabling the lights to react to the music. So what I'm going to do is just click on Enable Beat Reactor, then you need to choose your music file by clicking on Load External File. Now if you're working on a Mac, it works with AIF, on a PC, it should work with WAV files. So let's open that up. And this will automatically create an audio spectrum effect that animates to the music. Let me just unmute the music so you can see what happens. But what we want to do is translate this movement of the waveform animating to the music to the light intensity. So that way the light will get brighter as the beat moves. Does that make sense? So what we need to do is choose the light intensity parameter. So let's choose master intensity. And what this did is it now animates the light intensity to the music. So what you just saw was the light intensity of these lights here 
animating to the frequencies that are within this box that you see here. And you can customize this box to only include some of the frequencies. So if you don't want any of these green frequencies here or the yellows, we can move this box over. So that way the lights are only animating to these red beats. Does that make sense? So what we're going to do to restrict that is go to audio apply options A and down here there's sampler corner one and sampler corner two. And this allows us to control the size of the box. So if I move corner two here over this way to the left, I can cut out those yellow frequencies. And if I wanted to lower the top to cut off the higher frequencies here, I could move corner one down. So now we can turn off this graph. If we go here, we can hit no to show graph and now we can play it back. And there's one last step I wanted to show you because there is a snap in this music track. So if we listen back, you hear a snap here. And what I can do is have these lights turn on by animating the light intensity. So if I close out the beat reactor and I go to light again, from light source one, the blue light here, I can animate the intensity. So what I'll do is I'll go to that snap moment, which is here. Right here, I want the blue light to turn on. So I'll set a stopwatch to enable keyframe animation. And then I'll use the arrow key to move to the left, one frame, and then I'll bring it back down to zero. And now let's go to the second snap right here. And I want to animate the same thing. So I'm going to show you where the playhead is here. Hit the stopwatch to animate, move one frame over by hitting the left arrow key and then bring it back down to zero. So now when we play it back, the blue light will turn on and then the red light. So just to recap again, inside of Premiere Pro, you can turn on three different light sources. You can play around with smoke and enable a beat reactor. There's also some built-in camera tools that I did not cover, but if you prefer After Effects, there is a deeper level of integration with After Effects with stage light. For example, you can use any number of after Effects host native lights, you are not restricted just by three, and you can use After Effects native cameras. So it's pretty amazing what you can do with stage lights. I know that this covered a lot. If you have any questions at all about how to use the plugin, just leave a comment below. And if you prefer using After Effects as your host program, you can certainly use stage lights there and harness the native 3D camera system there. And so if you guys want to learn any other filters that you're curious about in the Boris FX plugin suite, just let me know in a comment below as well. And thanks again for watching you guys and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.